Hey guys, welcome to Blue Marble Science. Today we want to talk about why airplanes don't need to dip their noses. I know this has been talked about many times, but I continue to see it come up in comment sections. And for some reason, people have an idea that if I'm in this little 172 here, unless I continually push the nose over, I'll end up flying off into outer space like that. Well, no, I really won't. My airplane, regardless of the fact that I'm flying over a curved surface, will maintain the altitude it's trimmed to fly at. It does that all by itself. Because airplanes don't climb or descend unless we make them do that. Or something breaks. Oh yeah, it looks pretty much like that too when something breaks. There are four forces that act on an airplane. First there's the weight of the plane. Counteracting that is the lift provided by the wings. Thrust comes from the engines and drag is the air resistance uh, that's caused really by mostly by the lift but uh, somewhat by some of the parts and pieces that are hanging off the airplane. To be in level flight, we need, we need to have two things be true. Lift needs to equal weight and thrust needs to equal drag. If lift is greater than weight, then the plane is going to climb. If lift is less than weight, the plane is going to descend. If thrust is less than drag, the plane will decelerate. If thrust is more than drag, then the plane will accelerate. So as long as those conditions are met, lift equal weight, thrust equals drag, the plane will be in level, unaccelerated flight. Ah, here's my 172 again. I've tilted the nose up a bit just to make a, a little easier for you to see. The red arrow shows the direction of flight. That's the direction the airplane is actually moving in. The white arrow shows relative wind. That's not real wind. That's the airplane moving through the air. Above that you see angle of attack. Now that's not a flat earth term. That's, a, that's an aviation term that's been around forever. And it's literally the angle between the cord line of the wing, that red line there that runs right through the center of the wing, and the relative wind. Lift is generated by the airflow over the top of the wing and under the bottom of the wing. And it really only depends on speed and the density of the air. Airflow over the top of the wing produces a low pressure. That's the Bernoulli principle. And that low pressure pulls up on the top of the wing. Airflow under the bottom of the wing, actually striking the bottom of the wing, pushes the wing up. So it's pulling up from the bottom, uh, from the top, and pushing up from the bottom. An airplane stays at an altitude where the density of the air produces the lift required to exactly match the plane's weight. Let me give you an example of how this actually works in the real world. If I take this little 172 and I decide to take off and, uh, and make a trip, I want to climb to a cruising altitude, then I want to level off and, and fly to the de destination. To do that, when we take off, we set our airspeed for a, a climb speed and let's say that's 85 knots. That's set by the angle of attack of the wing, not by the power, by the angle of attack. This is a concept that uh, people who haven't flown airplanes don't fully understand, but in fact, pitch is airspeed, power is altitude. So, how do I set that? I pull the nose up until the airspeed indicator registers 85 knots. And then I adjust a thing on the back of the airplane, you see the, the little red circle there, called a trim tab. That's a little section of the uh, uh, elevator that I can adjust from inside the cockpit. So I don't have to sit there and hold pressure on the control yoke. I adjust that for 85 knots and away we go. We climb at 85 knots. And we do that until we reach a cruising altitude. Let's say we want to fly at 10,000 feet. When we reach 10,000 feet, we simply push the nose back over 
to a more level uh, attitude. And the first thing that happens is the airspeed climbs. So the airspeed will climb from 85 knots up to eventually uh, the cruise speed of this airplane, which is around 120 knots. And once it, everything stabilizes, I can adjust that trim tab so that I can take my hands off the control yoke and the airplane will simply maintain 10,000 feet. Now, that airplane is going to maintain 10,000 feet, and it's going to do that forever unless the barometric pressure changes, meaning that the density of the air has changed. Or if we fly long enough and burn off enough fuel, the plane gets a little lighter, and it might want to climb because of that. But, in general... It is never going to do anything other than try to stay at an altitude where the density of the air produces the lift it needs to exactly match the weight of the plane. This is the reason why the plane will not climb off into outer space. It can't do that. So, everybody with me so far? Good. I wanted to show a, a picture of an attitude indicator and an altimeter and talk about how we actually use instruments in an airplane. The attitude indicator is a device that gives us a, a visual reference of the attitude of the airplane. It's a gyroscopic instrument. In light aircraft, most of the time, they're operated by a vacuum system. Um, this thing is reference to gravity. I don't care where you put it on the earth and or how long it's been spinning. It is constantly re, recalibrating itself referencing itself to gravity at the point uh, it's located so it will always show you if you're in level flight the picture you're seeing on it right now the wings are level with the horizon the nose is on the horizon so the airplane is in level flight now normally on a nice day when you can see the horizon this thing doesn't have a whole lot of use it's not telling us anything that we can't see just by simply looking at it at the horizon on the other hand, at night or when the weather's bad, it becomes part of our instrument scan. It gives us a very quick way to look uh, at the attitude the plane is in and make adjustments or think about what we need to do to make adjustments to keep the airplane where we want it. It also gives us an indication of bank angle. The little triangle at the top is showing zero bank right now, or basically zero. And each mark is 10 degrees, so 10 degrees, 20 degrees, the longer line is 30 degrees, the little dot is 45 degrees, the next uh, big line is 60 degrees. Do not go there unless you like pulling two Gs. That's, uh, that's not recommended. But anyway, all right. That's what an attitude indicator is, and that's why it doesn't, it, it, it doesn't need to be changed while we're flying. It adjusts itself. The knob only adjusts the vertical position of the little yellow wings representing the airplane, and that's only done for parallax for different height pilots. When you sit down in the seat, if a big tall guy has been uh, looking at it, you, you may need to turn that knob and get the, the wings to line up on the horizon, but that's the only thing we use it for, and that's all it does. On the other hand, the altimeter is a very sensitive barometer. It will give us our altitude within, oh, 10 feet or so. Um, this is what we use to maintain altitude. While we're flying, we're constantly monitoring the altimeter and making small adjustments as we need to to stay within the prescribed limits. Um, the FAA typically, on an instrument flight plan, the FAA requires us to be within 100 feet of our assigned altitude, and they become very curious if you get off the altitude by more than that. So we, uh, we, we use this as the, as the primary instrument to determine the altitude of the airplane, period. That's it. Just that simple. So I think that's about all I need to say about the, about the instruments. There's lots of other instruments, and um, I think I may do some videos on, uh, on aviation in general, but that'll be for another time. So... Can we stop being silly now? An airplane doesn't know what added altitude it's at. It only knows the airspeed and the density of the air it's flying in. If we have trimmed the airplane to fly at a particular altitude, it will continue to do that until we force it to fly at some different altitude. 
It stays there because that is the point in the atmospheric pressure gradient where lift equals weight. There's no more to it than that. Just that simple. So, enough of that, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And don't make me come looking for you. <laughs>